Hello, my name is Erin Schoeneveld, Assistant Professor of East Asian Languages and Cultures and the Director of Visual Studies at Haverford College. In this video, I will share a brief overview and main arguments in my book, Shirakaba and Japanese Modernism, Art Magazines, Artistic Collectives, and the Early Avant-Garde, published in 2019 by Brill in their Japanese Visual Culture series. Shirakaba and Japanese Modernism provides a new comparative framework for understanding the tensions between the local and the universal that accompany the global development of modernism. I examine the most significant Japanese art and literary magazine of the early 20th century, Shirakaba, and its role in shaping the reception of European modernism. I consider how the avant-garde pursuit of individuality during Japan's Taisho period stood in opposition to state-sponsored modernism and how this played out among emerging technologies of reprographic media. More specifically, I analyze how the serialized dialogic nature of art magazines such as Shirakaba created new audiences and exhibition formats by allowing disparate artistic communities to interact and operate in and across national and transnational networks. My book argues that Japanese modernism cannot be reduced to the assimilation of external culture or an identification with the West. Instead, as attention to Shirakaba shows, modern Japanese artists and writers were engaged in national debates about what modernism is and about the primacy of the individual in Japanese artistic production. These debates were both intellectual and material. Shirakaba's approach involved a four-pronged strategy for articulating and participating in Japanese modernism. This strategy was a profoundly collaborative one that comprised a founding a print magazine establishing contact with living European artists, disseminating the work and ideas of European modernism throughout Japan, and holding public exhibitions that deliberately juxtapose the work of Japanese and European artists. Individually, these methods created four distinct spaces, which permitted Japanese artists to negotiate what it meant to be an individual on a personal level, as a member of an artistic or literary collective, and as a citizen of the Japanese nation. Collectively, these cooperative modes of association and artistic practice established a new model of praxis for the creation and display of modern Japanese art. As a material object and mouthpiece of the Shirakaba group that also functioned as a cultural space, Shirakaba magazine is a crucial archive and resource for understanding the global development of modernism. Thus, my book uses the magazine's dates from 1910 to 1923 as a framing device for its organization into five chapters. Chapters one to three of my book discuss the intellectual history of the group centered on the ideas and philosophies presented in the Shirakaba magazine. Chapters four and five focus on the artistic creation and exhibition strategies of the Shirakaba group and affiliated artists in an effort to concretize their ideology through the production and display of modern art. Chapter one explores the founding of Shirakaba and the vital role of the art magazine in early 20th century Japan as a medium that aspired to cultivate new audiences and foster an exchange of ideas by providing an alternate space within which to address diverse views about modern art, literature, critical theory, and identity. What emerged was a fresh discourse on the standing that individualism had in society. Shirakaba and other art and literary magazines of the period, such as the ones that you see here, were key in publishing visual and textual expositions of the modern experience. Chapter one demonstrates that Shirakaba was at the forefront of this development by creating a space that allowed artists and writers to construct new social and aesthetic network networks of discourse and display. Chapter 2 scrutinizes the reasons underlying the Shirakaba group's decision to seek contact with European artists, such as Heinrich Vogler and August Rodin, as well as to align itself with the art and biographies of artists such as Cezanne, Van Gogh, and Gauguin. It examines how the magazine acted as a vital conduit in facilitating the access to and direct exchange of artwork and ideas between Japan and Europe. Although Shirakaba was one of the first Japanese art magazines, to introduce the theoretical writings and color reproductions of works by Cezanne, Van Gogh, and Gauguin, the magazine also considered movements such as post-impressionism from philosophical and literary perspectives with the personality and biography of the artist valued above all else. Chapters three and four contextualize and historicize how Shirakaba circulated the ideology and art of their movement throughout Japan 
and how this resulted in a second generation of modern Japanese artists mediating conceptions of self, identity, and individualism. Although Shirakawa writers were instrumental in circulating newly constructed theories of modern art and identity, it was the Shirakawa artists who became the living templates of these ideas, giving them tangible form through their art. After three probes into the significance of and ramifications for the Shirakawa group and the broader discourse of modern art in the conventions of painting debate, in which Kinoshita Mokutaro, Yamawaki Shintoku, and Mushano Koji Saneyatsu argued over the specific use of oil painting as a medium for self-expression, with the culmination of this debate expressed in Yanagi Soetsu's manifesto, The Revolutionary Artist. The Shirakaba magazine's brand of individualism was directly related to an interpretation of European modernism that engaged with revolutionary language and aesthetics. Yanagi's concept of the revolutionary artist thus became a justification for rejecting state-sponsored modernism and for adopting a mode of self-promotion that was in opposition to the Japanese art establishment. The model of the revolutionary artist formulated by Yanagi and the Shirakawa group represented a complicated relationship between the individual and the collective, particularly in relation to the development of artistic identity and the quest for originality during the Taisho period. Chapter four shows that the concept of the revolutionary artist inspired the work of the second generation of modern artists and Shirakawa affiliates, most notably Takamura Kotaro, Umeharu Ryuzaburo, and Kishiro Ryusei. This chapter appraises the initial stages of these men's search for artistic identity, as well as the way in which their work made significant contributions to modern Japanese art that was neither tied to the state nor to their European mentors. For these artists, the concept of originality never began with a blank slate. Rather, it was entangled in a more complicated relationship shaped by diverse artistic styles, idioms, and antecedents. In an effort to articulate their own subjective reality, Takamura, Umehara, and Kishida selectively engaged with and transformed modernist idioms of artistic self-expression by incorporating the foreign and the familiar through concurrent processes of representation, adaptation, and preservation to construct a new modernism. Chapter five explores the Shirakawa group's changing views regarding modern art in relation to their exhibition practices. For Shirakawa, the space of the magazine as a site of artistic production and exhibition allowed the group to define their artistic agenda and to circulate their ideas, but it was simply a means to an end. Ultimately, the format was too ephemeral in nature and deemed insufficient for long-term circulation and display of art. Shirakawa organized 20 art shows between 1910 and 1922 that played a role different from the magazine by placing original works of art on public display alongside reproductions by European artists. Shirakawa also sponsored group and solo exhibitions of contemporary Japanese artists associated with the group. The transition to institutional exhibition practices grew out of the group's evolving artistic ideology regarding style and accessibility providing a new outlet in the education of the Japanese public about the future direction of modern art. This culminated in Shirakawa's campaign to build a museum of Western art. While the Shirakawa magazine and privately sponsored exhibitions created a foundation and point of departure for the promotion of new modes and styles of painting, it was the permanent structure of the art museum with original works of art that would guarantee the continuation of Shirakawa ideology. This chapter analyzes the shift in the status of the reproduced image and its relationship to the original work of art. The book concludes with an epilogue on the legacy of Shirakawa. On September 1, 1923, the Great Kanto Earthquake brought the activities of the Shirakawa group and magazine to an abrupt and cataclysmic end. Their vision of a museum of Western art was never realized, yet a museum dedicated to Western art opened in Tokyo's Ueno Park in 1959. And in 1983, art dealer and former Shirakaba patron Yoshi Chozo founded the Kiyoharu Shirakaba Art Museum. The ideology of the Shirakaba group also laid the groundwork for post-war artists and collectives such as the Gutai group. Gutai founder Yoshihara Jiro's embrace of concepts of artistic subjectivity, individuality, and most importantly, originality, formed the foundational principles guiding the creative output of Gutai and was rooted in Shirakawa's strategy of artistic collaboration. 
The book concludes with an appendix uh, and of a translation of Yanagi's Manifesto, The Revolutionary Artist, as well as a detailed list of the Shirakawa Group's 20 exhibitions. By forming alternate venues to display and discuss modern Japanese and European art, Shirakawa nurtured a space where the discourse and development of modern art became a joint conversation with divergent voices. The ability of Shirakawa to strike a balance between modernism and avant-gardism, supporting the autonomy of art and exercising change in its social role, transformed entrenched institutional practices in early 20th century Japan. In doing so, Shirakawa became a crucial inflection point for the development of Japan's early avant-garde by demonstrating that contrary to the received narrative that posits Japanese modernism as merely derivative, the debate was lively, contested, and self-reflexive.